In this video, we are going to put a gambrel style roof on top of our garage with a loft. Now, even though I'm going to provide you with the framing information, I'm also going to provide you with some information at the end of the video that might provide you with a better way of building something like this. Now, keep in mind that I am not a structural engineer, even though I do have a pretty good understanding about what might be required because of the time I have spent building and designing my own projects. So with that said, let's go ahead and remove the roof. And since I have already provided viewers with the information on how to get to this point here in a previous video in this series, I would suggest going and checking that out if you want more information about how we got to this point here. And another thing I will not be providing you with is step-by-step -step guidance on how to assemble a project like this. And as you guessed, the reason for that is because I already have a couple of videos on that. So feel free to go to the website and check out some of our roof framing videos, which should provide you with a way to figure out the height of the walls and the location, along with the roof rafters. And here we are going to be lapping the roof rafters here to create a stronger connection. And the rafters at the bottom will be shaped so that they will look something like this. And of course, you can toenail the rafters into the framing plates here and then toenail the rafters into the framing plates up here, along with using some 16D nails to fasten these two rafters together here. So maybe somewhere around four or six nails to fasten those rafters together. And then you can end nail the rafters here or toenail them to the roof ridge. And on this side of the building, I went ahead and lapped the rafters and installed another board here to create a flat surface for the wall framing and provide you with another method of how this can be done. On the other side, I'm gonna do something else. And I went ahead and extended the roof ridge three quarters of an inch so that the breaks between the two pieces of fascia board will be nailing into the ridge. However, you might need to reshape the end of the fascia board here, depending upon what size fascia board you're going to be using. Next up, let's go ahead and install our blocks. And that will be a row of blocks on top of the wall framing here, along with the framing plates. And I would suggest shaping the top of them to match the roof rafters. And even though I didn't put it in the video, you might want to run another block over here and then fasten it to the this block here so that you can get roof sheathing perimeter nailing at the break between the sheathing here and the sheathing here. And you might need a different saw to shape it here or to create a nice connection between the two different roof planes here. And of course the bottom blocks will need to be shaped also. And our roof rafters are spaced 16 inches on center. And now let's go ahead and take a look at how we finished off the rafters on this side along with our exterior wall with our doorway in it. And of course we are going to be framing the roof a little different on this side where the two rafters here will not be lapping like they are over here. To provide you with another way to finish this side of the building off. Next up we are going to be installing a 1x4 around the perimeter edge of the gambrel style roof to provide us with an overhang that we will be able to slide our siding or stucco lath paper along with the netting and the finished stucco to provide us with a nice way to create a waterproof or at the very least a water resistant transfer between the roofing and the wall finish. And on your project, you might need to install a two by four here or even something larger depending upon the type of finished material you're going to be using. And of course the one by four will go all the way around the perimeter, including the top of the ridge here that I mentioned earlier. And you can see here where you could have ran the one by four up and left the ridge even with the wall framing. However, I like to be able to nail the fascia board into the roof ridge here. However, if you do it the other way, the building probably isn't going to fall down. So don't worry about that. 
that. And as always, I will leave that decision up to you. Next up, let's go ahead and install our fascia board. And our fascia board is going to be two by six. And the top of the fascia board will plane into or be even with the top of the roof rafters so that our roof sheathing will be nice and flat. Next up, let's go ahead and take a tour of the fascia board here. Get an idea of what it looks like closer up and how the top of this board here is going to be angled to match the plane of the roof here and even a 45 degree angle something you can cut with a circular saw might work just fine here and of course you could always change the corner detail and here you can see where the fascia board is sticking past a little bit so we can slide our siding underneath into this slotted area along with our building paper. Next up, let's go ahead and install our roof sheathing. Now this might not work for you. You might need to bring the sheathing back a little bit depending upon how you're going to finish this area here. And you might be able to finish it with some roofing edge metal. And that edge metal would go all the way around the perimeter here. And this should give you a pretty good idea how the roof sheathing will work out. And we are using 4 by 8 sheets of either plywood or OSB. Now I wanted to point out that you might or might not be able to fudge the sheathing a little bit. Like I did here. I moved it a quarter of an inch here. And then I pulled it back at the top a little bit so that I could get my perimeter nailing. So it would have been better if I had about eight foot, three quarters of an inch. But like most of you, you're not going to be interested in purchasing more lumber when you might be able to reposition the sheathing just a little bit or maybe even run a row of blocks down the center here so that the perimeter nailing of the roof sheathing will work. And that about wraps this roof up here. However, I'm not 100% sure that our previous example is going to provide us with a structurally sound building where in this example it might work a little bit better because we're going to install a ridge beam and yes we're going to need to redistribute the weight for that ridge beam and even install a post somewhere in the center so if you don't like the post in the center then i would suggest contacting an engineer to see if they can provide you with a different design now here's the reason why i'm not 100 percent happy with this roof and that's the fact that we have about a 53 degree angle here. Whereas if you change this to a 45 degree angle or less, then you would be able to create a brace, something that would prevent this wall from moving in this direction because the weight from the roof above might want to push this out and the angle here might not be enough to prevent that from happening. However, something like this might, and I've seen this used before. Someone goes in and installs a brace like this. However, you might need a brace like this on every rafter or four foot on center, but I won't be able to provide you with that information. However, I can provide you with some information on how to attach the brace to the wall framing. And that will probably include having two 16D nails nailed through the brace into the wall framing plate and a couple of end nails going into the wall framing studs. And on almost every project like this, someone usually has access to this area for storage or even maintenance. So I went ahead and framed out an access opening that might look something like this. So again, some type of a bracing system might solve your problem. And if you don't like the bracing idea, then I think the ridge beam will solve your problem. However, let's not forget that we are going to need to make some modifications to the floor framing, and that will include some type of a doubler or a beam that will transfer the weight of the post supporting the ridge through a post on each side and then down to the building foundation. And here's something that a lot of framing carpenters forget and I've even done it myself, and that's to include some type of support blocks to transfer the weight a little bit better through the floor framing and then through the support posts in the lower wall. So another thing to consider when you are working on a project like this 
And of course you will need to do that on the other page. And don't forget that if you don't like the post in this spot here, that you can relocate it. And basically you can move the post away from the center if you need to. And what this is going to do is probably going to change the size of the longer beam. So for example, if I move the post over here for some reason, and I had a 4x12 beam here, then I might need to put a 4x16 in this section here. Or if I wanted to get rid of the post, then I might need some type of a paralam or a glue lamb in here to span the distance. So don't get sold on the idea that you do need a post in there. However, if we do move the post, let's not forget that we're going to need to move the support beam. And I'm sure that's something you're not going to forget about during the design or construction part of the project. And if you do go with a full length beam and no post, then you might need a larger header. And you can see here how the weight from both sides of the header transfers down through the posts and to the building foundation and just kind of get a close-up view of how I made the header work here. Header, we have a post supporting the beam and how it ties into the rafters here. And of course we could always extend the king stud up a little bit to get some nailing into the header and we could always use some type of a strap to provide a better connection between the roof rafter, the beam, and the other roof rafter. And you could always angle a strap here or put a couple of straps in here to provide a better connection between the post and the header and the ridge beam. Or even find other building hardware that will provide a better connection. And the last thing I want to mention is that you might need to install some type of a strap over the rafters and roof sheathing, or you'll need to install some collar ties to prevent any uplift in the roof framing system. And if I have done my job right, then you have a little more information about building a gambrel roof, some type of a loft or storage area, or even additional living area over a 20 foot by 24 foot garage. And next up, I will provide you with a simple method you can use if you are building steep roofs and trying to use your framing square to lay out the roof rafters and you just don't have enough room on one side of the framing square. It's just not going to be long enough. So let's go ahead and take a look at what I'm talking about on a gambrel roof where we're going to have a steep rafter on one side, especially if we use this method where we're going to be using a half circle to design the shape of the roof. And if we have a standard framing square and we're going to be using the 12 inch measurement at the bottom like we have here. For this particular roof pitch we are going to run out of room here. We're going to need another 4 and 5 sixteenths inches. And I'm not about to suggest you can't attach something and clamp it onto your framing square to use a framing square, but why bother if you don't have to? And this is actually one of the tips one of our viewers left in the comment area. They simply suggested that since it is a ratio, you can divide the ratio in half. So for example, half of 12 is going to be 6, and half of our other measurement is going to be around 13 inches, allowing us to use our framing square to shape the roof rafter seat cuts and plumb cuts and fascia board cuts also if we're going to lay those out. And of course I can't leave you with that method only. For example here we have a 30 and 12 roof pitch. So for every 12 inches in run we're going to go up 30 inches in height. And that would be instead of dividing the number in half we're going to divide it into other multiples. So for example, 9 would be 1 fourth of 12, or we would have 4 3 inch increments in the number 12. So if we're going to use the number 9, we're just simply going to figure out what 1 fourth of 30 is and subtract it from 30. 
and I believe that number is going to be 22 and a half inches. However, if you don't want to use the tip of the framing square or you're off just a little bit and you want to switch it to another number like eight, now we're going to be dealing with one third. So if we divide three into 12, we're going to have three four inch measurements. And we're simply going to do the same thing for the number above, which will be 20. So not too difficult to figure out, because if we divide 3 into 30, we're going to end up with 10 inches. We're just simply going to subtract 10 inches from our 30 inches to give us 20 inches. So I can take any numbers like 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6 and divide them into the current ratio that I'm using to create a smaller ratio. Or you can try and find a longer framing square. And if you do find one, let me know. I've never seen them, but they're probably out there somewhere. I just don't know about them. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, let us know by hitting the thumbs up button or letting us know in the comment area.